Hello, this is Ian from the Lightworks team in England with a Redshark exclusive look at Lightworks for Linux. Lightworks is on course to be the first professional editing application running across Windows, Linux and OS X. A major milestone on that multi-platform roadmap is coming up before the end of March 2013. It's when EditShare releases the beta version of Lightworks for Linux. This is what Linux fans can expect. You're going to see a quick overview of Lightworks running on Ubuntu Linux. We'll show you the basic operation and then some more sophisticated tools like trimming. You'll even see some real-time effects. Here it is then, the first official online demo of Lightworks for Linux, the only professional editing program for the Linux platform. So when you launch Lightworks, the first screen you'll be displayed with is the project browser. From here I can see recently used projects and in each project I can also have different rooms. The concept of room relates to screen layouts. I can also see path of the project information and also import projects from restore from archive. In the frame rate column I can have frame rates from film 24 all the way through to 60. What we're going to do is start a 24 frame project and into this project I can bring in multiple frame rates as well. So this is the mixed frame rate setting. Let's import some media. Lightworks supports all the major codecs available today from AVI, MOV, MXF containers. In my import source folder here, I have multiple clips from multiple sources. They're mixed frame rates and mixed codecs. I can import everything in this folder by selecting the folder and choosing import. In my multi-format folder here, I have footage from 5D Canon camera, Avid DNX, low-res MPEG-4 proxies here, Canon MXF from XF series cameras, P2 contents, MOV contents, XT Cam EX, AVC HD, P2 AVC Intra, Standard P2, Sony AVC HD, even uncompressed multi-channel clips are available. Let's import all of these in one go. That import is now complete. The next stage would be to edit these into a timeline. I can simply select some clips, storyboard them in order if I wish. I can pop open a clip, mark a region, insert it to the timeline, make a storyboard and drag them straight to the timeline. Additionally, from the bin fast menu, I could select all or multiple clips and make an edit. On the cogs icons in Lightworks, you'll find all sorts of functionality and tools to help make your editing process faster. Let's make an edit from this process. Use the marks on the tiles, hit yes, the edit is created, and now my timeline is displayed. There's some material from the GoPro Hero 3 camera. Let's go and have a look at a familiar editing layout in the source and record room. Here's my source clips where I'm marking them up to insert them to the timeline down here. I've got my record monitor here and I've used the burn-in timecode display Bitsy panel to bring this up here. Down on the timeline we've got a few uh, dissolves added. I uh, just wanted to show you uh, some real-time dissolves and, and a brief bit of trimming. So inserting clips is a case of just marking them up and using the shortcuts or on-screen console down here to insert them to the timeline. If you'd like to trim your clips, click on the boundary. I've got a variety of different types of trim, including single and dual roller, slip and slide. It's very easy to do J and L cuts, etc. So as I trim with the mouse, so I can use JKL trimming. You can see my incoming and outgoing shots over here. Let's add a dissolve down here. So I'll right click on a cut, add a dissolve and I've got some other parameters here and I can access other effects as well so this is the quick transition menu so add a dissolve and actually dissolves can be trimmed so I'm just going to resize that over here and then we go through that dissolve to the next scene as well so it's very quick and responsive to get your edit together also from my timeline it's very easy to pop out source media as well so I can show the tile of this clip and load that into the monitor here, use match frame as well. I can show the viewer by itself, so we can actually have extra viewers open for review. Uh, I can also show the card, the file information um, about this particular clip as well. So it's uh, very easy to find the information you need. Also, it's quite easy to edit sequences into new sequences. So I'm just going to make a new edit over here. And this one has got the record light on, which means it's armed. I can use my other sequence we can see in the background here as a source. 
So let's just mark some of that and I'm going to insert that into this new edit timeline here. So we're now nesting sequences together and that's a very nice way of assembling different parts of a program series for instance. Let's have a look at the effects room. Lightworks has many comprehensive transition and filter effects. You can find all of these in the effects panel underneath their different groups. The types of effects you can find in there are color effects, DVE effects, 2D and 3D with split screens, blue screen and green screen keyers, image key and luma keying. You can also find masks for working on specific regions of your picture. Mats to create colour bars and gradients. Mixes to blend and composite your layers of video. Much like Photoshop blending effects. Dissolves and wipes and pushes and squeezes. Stereoscopic 3D adjustments and we'll look briefly at that shortly. Stylize effects, blurs and glows. And I've got a glow on this picture here. There's also a basic titler. On the left hand side I have my effects editing panel. And if we close this up, I can see I've got two effects on this clip down here. Effects can be removed or turned on and off from this panel. Additionally, in the middle, we have the effects routing, where I can see, by going to other parts of the timeline, effects routing on the segment that I'm parked on. And you'll notice, as I scrub, the thumbnails will change and modify as well. Let's have a look at effects on the timeline. I've got two effects on my V1 segment, but I'd like to see those both individually. If I right click and choose unfold, I can expand the effects stack inside the segment. I'm going to minimize V1 and open up the effects track. This will be playing through the GPU and processed in real time. I've also added some keyframes with linear and more curved base transfers. These are easily modified and all the parameters in the effect have keyframe tracks assignable. So I'm just going to hit play and we're going through saturation and desaturation on those keyframes. The effects segment can be trimmed as well just like normal media. So if I go into trim mode I can use JKL to move this effect over other parts of my timeline. Let's drop a title effect on there as well. Add one more effect. The titler comes up we have a title interface here. It's a basic title tool but has some useful functions. I can change the font, change the size here, the face, position and shadow, and outline, and in and out transition effects. Additionally, all effects can be saved or you can import your own user effects. You can write your own effects templates. See the Red Shark article about this for further detail. And you can also download some examples from the forum made by other forum members, which are an excellent starting point for designing your own custom effects. Let's go and have a look at some multi-camera work. Lightworks can synchronize unlimited amounts of cameras depending on your hardware. I've made a multi-camera sync group here using the multi-camera tool here. From my select bin, I've synchronized these by specific lock frames. But you're also free to synchronize to timecode as well from a variety of tracks where timecode is contained. Additionally, with multi-camera editing, you can live edit straight to the timeline. Let's have a look at the playback. There's the six files playing back nice and smoothly. If you'd like to adjust the lock frames, you can do that as well. Let's have a look at working with some stereoscopic material. Here I've made a bin from some rushes from Hugo Cabret in 3D. Hugo was edited on Lightworks. These rushes are DNX HD left and right eye. Let's quickly make an edit from this bin. We'll open this viewer and open the timeline. You can see on my timeline I have left and right eye now. Working with this material is just the same as working with 2D material. I can trim and add effects very easily. I'd like to choose how my viewers are displayed and I do this from the project configuration tool. I've set them all to side by side, but there are other options with split screen, checkerboarding, anaglyph and difference options. Let's check this on a full screen display. Set Lightworks to full screen and that's ready to go. Of course this output could go to a suitable 3D display monitor.
Additionally, we have the stereoscopic effect for adjusting convergence and other parameters in the file. Simply drag and drop the effect to a clip. Let's locate that clip on the timeline and use convergence and color adjustments to match the eyes. You can keyframe all of these parameters just like you would any other effect, which makes it very helpful for changing convergence over time. Of course, 3D material can be exported very easily. If I choose export, choose my 3D edit, I can choose which stereoscopic eye to export and in what method. Let's have a look at some audio work. I have an audio workspace here already. Working with audio on the timeline, we can add fader automation points. I've written these in here with this volume slider here. Additionally, you can write these points in with a control surface. We can raise and lower points on the timeline, make speed changes, on the mixer, we have solos, muting, track grouping, and we can mix into groups, master mix, panning. Additionally, in my effects section, I have a basic audio suite of crossfade and EQ. On the EQ, we have a five band EQ with a variety of filters available, high, low pass, etc. And of course, on individual source clips, you can see source timelines. This allows me to mark my source clips with relative accuracy across the audio waveform. Another nice feature on the audio tracks is at the start of each clip, if I right click in the corner, I can fade in. And you may not be able to see on the screen resolution, but audio keyframes run to one quarter of a frame. So I can set this to quarter frame intervals as well. That applies also to the audio nodes as well. Let's take a look at the export options in Lightworks. I'll go to my export room. From the exporter panel, I can choose what I'd like to export, the whole project, a bin, or specific media and edits. There's a wide variety of target codecs and options. I can make a Lightworks archive with media or not. I can choose AAF for working with audio post-production. I can make an EDL with a variety of other parameters and settings. I can make an OMF. Also, I can export image sequences in DPX or JPEG, PNG or other formats as well. In DPX, I can go right up to 5K film formats. Checking under Film, we can go to these 5K DPX streams. Lightworks allows you to make any resolution file you'd like to from your sequences. I can go to MOV with a number of codecs. MXF, again, with subcodecs. Audio files. Specific camera structured formats, AVC HD, MTS, M2TS, H264. P2, XDCAM EX with a variety of bit rates. XDCAM HD, again with bit rate selection. Other targets for Blu-ray can include MTS and M2TS, H264, and additionally you can go to DVD files in these formats as well for later authoring. You can also change frame rates as well in your export from your original project settings. We hope this overview has been helpful. Keep an eye on LWKS.com and RedShark announcements for the public beta program of Lightworks on Linux platform.